Greater Manchester has taken charge of the £6 billion spent on health and social care in our 10 boroughs. We did this devolution deal because we want to make our own decisions here about some of the most important things in our lives, including helping our 2.8 million people be healthier. If we're healthier, we'll be more independent, more likely to be in work, and to be connected to our friends and our community. In turn, that makes us happier. But how do we make that happen? We asked the people living in our 10 towns and cities, why aren't we living the healthier lifestyles we know we should? What's stopping us and what can be done about it? We got together a great team of partners, all teamed up to get people interested in talking about their health, online, on air, on the road, in print and face to face, including the people we don't often hear from. Then we invited the people of Greater Manchester to an online workshop to see what could be done. More than 6,000 of us joined in. We have a new understanding of all our people. What we found was that we fall into six categories. Some of us think we're healthier than we are. Some of us think we're unhealthier than we are. But lots of us think we're a bit unhealthy and would like to do something about it. So what's stopping us from taking charge of our health? We're scared of being judged. We're too embarrassed to admit we can't cook healthy food. We don't want to do the walk of shame from the changing rooms to the pool. We struggle to say no to another drink with our friends. We don't feel it's always easy to do the right thing. Our parks and streets sometimes don't feel safe enough to get out and about. Or our bosses don't help us take the time. We're drowning in information or don't know who to listen to. It feels like the people who work in health and social care, the ones we should take health advice from, seem unhealthier than we are and it feels like we don't have the time and the money. So what can be done to sort some of this? We've come up with some suggestions which we now need to make happen. Let's stop throwing good money on campaigns and schemes which don't work. We should find out more about our six types of people so we can be even better at helping each other out. We should build each other's confidence so we're not scared of being judged. Our NHS and social care bosses should help our health and care staff be role models and train our staff to focus on people more than systems or processes. And finally, we'll keep on talking. The answers are here in our cities, towns, communities and families and our leaders are listening.